Um, welcome to uh, another installment of Revelations and this uh, beautiful day today we have Roger Smith with us and Roger has uh, one piece that will be displayed uh, in the Dark Knight series that we've got coming up. So um, Roger, the, why don't you just give us a little bit of a background before we actually go to that piece of work. Um, can you just tell me a little about, about yourself, about your background, your artistic practice, where you went to school, your career, any, anything you want to tell us about yourself that can help us understand you as an artist? Okay, well, I'm primarily noted for being a scientific photographer. That started uh, 1964. I guess I got my first camera. I was a freshman or second year at UNB. And I was actually using my camera to photograph biological specimens. And one of the professors, Dr. Taylor, was a keen photographer. He encouraged me to, to do it because, uh, you know, you're supposed to be drawing, uh, doing all this stuff during their labs. And anyway, so I actually got a job at UNB after I finished my master's and gradually started taking pictures for, for the undergraduate students and uh, professors and, and sort of fine-tuned it into a job as a scientific photographer. As far as I know, I was the, the only one other than uh, Mary Primrose at the Dalhousie University. Interesting. Wonderful so, job. Yes. Yeah, so how long were you at UNB doing that? 40 years. Wow. Well, <laughs> I, well almost for the 39, something like that. But Yeah. Uh, wow, that's incredible. So what kind <laughs> of, like, for, explain more about that. What kind of, I mean, you were there, there for 40 years photographing scientific oh, experiments or? Sure. Yeah. Things like. Any, well, everything. I, I did some microscopy pictures, uh -huh. and, and uh, but mostly with slides for lectures. A lot of the most boring stuff was uh, uh, taking pictures out of books to, for professors to use for slides. Remember I, slides? Yes, I do <laughs> remember slides from my <laughs> art history days at U of T. Yes, I do. I hated yeah. them. I'm so glad we don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> PowerPoint <laughs> is a great invention. <laughs> well, it, it I was you know that sort of there for the early days. It was really hard to. And to transition from slides to PowerPoint, it was pretty disastrous for a while. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, I retired in uh, 2011, so it's been wow, nine years. Right, but you're one of the first people that I knew about who were, was actually using laser jet printing, and sort of you were, I'd say, around here, are definitely on the cutting edge of of uh, different ways of printing, and um, you know that end of the, the processing of photography. That's right. I've uh, been the, well, <laughs> you can see some of these pictures behind me in my wall. Those are fairly early prints. So the first time I printed them, I had a little Epson printer that the biology department uh, had, and I put the pictures up and they faded in three months. <laughs> I, I was bet, so yes. disappointed. But uh, there were uh, sort of third party companies were coming out with more permanent inks, and but they didn't fit the, the printer properly. So you had, oh, you had to learn how to do profiling and it was but you're right i was it was great fun i was uh early late very late 90s early 2000s i thought i met you or what when would you uh, i came that? to unb in 91. okay well our infamous uh, pi pi project I, that, that's right you're right our pi project <laughs> infamous in right. some some centers yes and i'm trying to remember um what were you photographing at the time well i remember um i was doing the fibonacci squares yes the, that's uh, right that's what we did one plus two plus three yes and um some some uh oh weird colored uh uh things from the microscope pictures or whatever but yes, i think the, right. the basic idea it seems to me was scientific photography as art i think is yes how you yeah yeah that's right <laughs> and we use pi as the the foundation or that's i right. use pi as the foundation to lay out the images that you guys presented to me yeah. that was okay. a lot of fun i love that that was wonderful was, yeah one of the last exhibits in the in the top floor of the Howard Douglas Hall. <laughs> right. Yes, that's true. Um, no, it's it, that was an interesting project, I think, because I learned uh, the language of science a little bit more and how the language of science and art actually are not that different in, in lots of different ways. No, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's a lot of fun. Well, that's <laughs> cool. Right on. So um, talk about... Uh, Talk about a little bit about the work that you do uh, outside of the work that you did uh, for UNB. I mean, that micros microscopy has been uh, something that you've incorporated in the work that you do for your own um, expression. Well, not, not so much microscopy, more macro. Uh, okay. I guess I, I would be spe a specialist in um, okay. ultra, ultra close-up stuff. And, okay. And... Uh, um, 
oh, I love going out in the, uh, uh, in the, in the wilderness and with my macro lens and, and I, <laughs> I'd also like, I, I was accused of liking dead and dying gardens at one time. <laughs> and I, I, I do, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if I coined the phrase, but in one of my shows, I, I said, I was looking around and, and uh, what was it? I, uh, I saw things that other people wouldn't, didn't notice things that had a stubborn beauty, I think that, that deserved a second look like, uh, uh, flowers that are past their prime and, um, mm -hmm. mushroom so, things. <laughs> I did a, I used to do slideshows with music. Uh, that, that, and I learned that from, uh, from the forensic photographer, Freeman Patterson, who, okay. uh, who came to UNB in uh, 1973, if you can imagine that back that far. <laughs> and he did a two screen slideshow with music and I was, oh, wow. <laughs> well, I had to try it myself. But of course, the, those old slide projectors, they would always jam in the middle. And <laughs> so, yes, that's right. It would just keep like. <laughs> <flex and, laughs> oh, and then you'd have to start all over again. And but uh, so uh, I, of course, I've, I've expanded that or advanced to the uh, the uh, computer projections now, and they're an awful lot easier to do. <laughs> and of course, once you got by the early days when they, the computer kept crashing, and at least uh, that doesn't happen as much anymore. So yeah, things are a little bit more tried and true, and uh, yes. a little bit more in in, in general parlance for sure. <laughs> the work that we're featuring in Dark Knight is a work that came from uh, an exhibition that the UNB Art Center did a few years ago called One Moment. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? It's the um, the gravestones. This is the uh, the uh, the uh, Florence War Cemetery in, in Italy. I believe so. They're, they're white, white gravestones. I should have uh, shown you the picture that I was using first so that you knew what I was talking yeah. about. But no, it's the, it's the row upon, realities. the row upon row of white. Yes, yes. White with, a, with a gentleman in a hat. That's right, the, that's right. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's a, uh, it's a um, Second World War cemetery quite near Florence, Italy. Okay. A bunch of us went there. Most of us were associated with, with UNB some way or another, but we rented a villa in Ponte Sieve, quite near Florence, and we were driving up along the, the highway and we saw this beautiful uh, cemetery. And one of our number is, is Dutch, so his parents went through the war, and so he was quite interested. And so we wandered through this. It's just a, well, it's, it's there's 1,630 people. Uh, com I think they're all Commonwealth uh, soldiers who were killed in, in and around Florence, 1943-44. Right. But like so many of these European war cemeteries, it's beautifully kept and very, very moving. But mm -hmm. we saw there were uh, people, um, soldiers from New Zealand, there, Canada, like there's 49, I think I counted, soldiers from Canada buried there. Really? But, um, and I think even South Africa, there, but almost every Commonwealth country uh, was represented. Mm -hmm. um, but wow, it's, uh, it's really beautiful, but horrifying at the same time. The numbers, and I think that I, your photograph for me, you know, shows that sort of endless row on row of these white, you know, markers that just go on. They, oh, they go out of the, yeah. the field of the, of the picture. Yeah. Well, the, the background is the Arno River, which is was the scene of horrible battles during the, the Italian campaign. Um, just, well, you know, uh, but we, <laughs> It's as I say, it's such a beautiful site. Uh, it it shows up from if you're you know using Google Maps or something like that, you can actually see it and zoom down uh, on it, and uh, it's really? you can see the rows from from really? that. Really? Oh, I'll definitely check that out. So look up Florence War Cemetery, and that's okay. it'll come right right up. Wow. All right. So. So how long were you in Florence on sort of this? Were, were you there as just a photographic group when you stumbled upon this or were you there to discover more about the war uh, well, and its effect in, in Italy? No, we were, we were just a bunch of us that uh, were friends. We, you know, we sort of got together Friday nights kind of thing. And some, I think it was Peter, our, our Dutch friend, came up with the idea, why don't we go to Tuscany? And okay. we said, why not? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> what better we idea? Exactly, we were there two weeks. And we rented a couple of cars and drove around, but used the, the train system in that area was fabulous. Yes. Uh, uh, so uh, we went to, to Florence several times and to Siena and um, mm -hmm. some went to Milan and Pisa. Wow. I actually saw the Leaning Tower. <laughs> yes. Well, so it, 
yeah, nowadays that's going to be a little bit more of a challenge to, to yeah. do that, yeah. that. Well, that's what, what they're saying. I'm just hearing about Venice on the news just this morning. I didn't get, we didn't get to Venice, but it's 90% tourism. And that's, yeah. uh, so ironically, the, uh, the Italians are able to look at their own city now. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so, I hear the water is quite clean. <laughs> yes, so so they so they say, yeah. Yeah, interesting but, times. You know, yeah. It's that talk about a silver lining, but it's pretty narrow silver lining. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny that almost a precursor to the Venice Biennale this year, the sort of the slogan was uh, "interesting times," or "may you live in interesting times." <laughs> and, and you know, that's definitely um, where that we're came at. true. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Um, so talk about the work that you're doing now. Um, I know that I have an exhibition scheduled with Silverfish, uh, of which you're a member. To maybe talk a little bit about Silverfish. Okay, well that's that. My part of it actually goes back to the macro photography I was talking about. I, I just, um, uh, well, our group's been together for for 20 years. This the show was was originally going to be called 2020, <laughs> which. It's a little bit, you know, very much hackneyed now, of course, and of course, <laughs> but uh, so we, I think we're working on changing the name, but that's the, also the 20th anniversary of the, of the group uh, it, uh, got together. I think they were all, the original members were all graduates from the Renta College of Craft and Design. Right. And as far as I know, there are only about two members, original members left. I joined in 2001, so I, I'm uh, one of the longest. <laughs> I've been there 19 years, so. And who um, else, who else would have been? At the foundation. Oh, uh, Karen Rue and uh, Burton Lindenning were the, I think right. the two. Uh, okay. Uh, two original there. members. Interesting. And, uh, yeah. So we've but, done quite a few shows, but um, maybe talk a little bit about the one that's coming up. And we uh, have it scheduled for January 2021. Yeah. <laughs> the, the show Hopefully. of Formy Gnome is 2020. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, of course. The original idea being the, the year of perfect vision, har har. Uh, so a lot of us had you know, had come up with ideas about t different types of vision or how to represent vision. Um, one of us, for example, had, uh, lost the sight of one of his eyes and he's th working on, on showing that. And, mm. and no, just uh, the, the, the <laughs> this group is kind of silly. We had, not silly, but we, we come up with a title for a show and then everybody immediately tries to see how far away they can get from the title and still, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> and, still still somehow. and you know that the, some of them really have a, uh, some cool ideas. One of our members is actually living in China at the moment and uh, she's doing uh, something to do with holograms. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work either. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Anyway, but my particular thing was, uh, um, I was interested in, I've always been interested in the tiny raindrops that, that uh, go, um, collect on leaves and stems. But anyone that's tried any macro photography knows that when you, the closer you get, the harder it is to get enough in focus. It's mm. called a depth of field, uh, we photographers. Um, but there are, in my, when back, getting back to my scientific photography days, getting enough depth of field was the holy grail, so to speak, of, uh, and there's just no, there's no way to do it with film, but uh, the digital uh, regime has allowed us uh, something called focus stacking, which you can actually take a number of pictures at different depths, uh, like the beginning, the front of the picture, middle, back, and the, the software actually combines them into one in-focus picture, which is just, it was something I'd give my, uh, my right arm for back in the <laughs> my 40 years ago. photography days. <laughs> But, so I'm, it's a combination of, 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 of these lovely raindrops with the, the sort of upside down worlds inside them mm. and, and, and this technology of uh, taking, I think I took eight to 10 pictures of each one, which is tricky because yeah. you're outside and they're, they're moving slightly. And if, you know, if, if it moves too much, the software won't, kicks it out, it won't, it won't accept it. So nice. uh, I had to do, I did each shot about you know, I, 10 times doing maybe eight or 10 shots each. And, Wow. And I managed to get, uh, I think, six in, the, in this case, of, uh, in this particular uh, grouping. And, <laughs> and I'm with, uh, hoping that we can actually get the show on the wall as we... Uh, yes, I we, am hoping that quite, very much. <laughs> 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 Myself. The, the prints are quite large, so when you look at these tiny water drops, they're about the size of small balloons. So you can actually see, see quite clearly in, into, the, into the worlds inside the, the raindrops. So 
anyway, it's, it's, it's just a kind of a silly um, passion, I guess you might say, of, of mine. But maybe I think I've pretty much uh, <laughs> finished with it now for a while. <laughs> But I, cool. the other main interesting thing is all these pictures were taken within 20 feet from my front door. So really, is, you really have to go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that was something Freeman Patterson used to say. You didn't have to go out you know, uh, the other side of the world to take interesting pictures. <laughs> so, so COVID-19 uh, would have been uh, not a problem then for uh, a photographer. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wow. I know you forage for mushrooms and, and things like that. Do you do a lot of photography of mushrooms and things like that? Um, well, interestingly, not that much for myself, but I, uh, for 15 years now, I've been involved with the New Newfoundland and Labrador mushroom foray. Uh, a friend of mine who I went to UNB with is, uh, was running it, and he asked me back in 2004, would I come and photograph the specimens they'd collected? And I said, sure, why not? And <laughs> 15 years later, I'm, I'm still going back, so. You're the court uh, photographer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm the official photographer for yeah. the Newfoundland and um, Labrador mushroom foray. I wonder. I'm wondering if I'm, go I'm going for the record of the most number of pictures on uh, what's it called? Uh, oh dear, the Instagram. Um, uh, 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 I, I can't remember the uh, the uh, site where you 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 know you put all these Flickr fl the Flickr website. Okay. Yeah. The last time I counted, I have something like over five thousand photographs of, of mushrooms. They're incredibly boring. They're sitting on a gray background with a little black and white centimeter square beside them. <laughs> but, you know, for diagnostic purposes and so on, they, they've actually been used a little bit because uh, a lot of the, the, the uh, people do running the, the foray are professional mycologists from all over the world. They've, we've had people from, from um, uh, Holland and from um, you know, Germany and, and uh, Estonia, Norway. United States, of course, and Canada, yeah. and uh, they are they, they use some of these photographs occasionally. They write papers. They they, they we collect the specimens too, and they can do DNA analysis. And so, you know, it's it's actually for over the 15, 16 years it's been running, it's been quite a uh, quite an interesting thing. So every yeah. September, except for this year, unfortunately, it's canceled. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I get my ferry reservation and pack my car with a. Uh, camera stuff and, and drive to uh, to Newfoundland and we uh, the uh, over the 15 years it's been all over the uh, province so started in Grossmore National Park went over to St. John's we went to Fogo Island one year which is amazing uh, mm -hmm. any anybody that's heard of the Fogo Island Inn we actually got we was the year it was opened actually oh, we got to have our, our uh, opening reception there with uh, cool. Zita Cobb the uh, amazing woman who who started this whole thing and so uh, <laughs> uh, I can get, I can brag that I've been at the Fogo Island Inn. Yeah. <laughs> very, but very cool. Anyway, that's, that's, that's the mushroom thing. I still enjoy, nice thing about photographing mushrooms is that they don't move. So uh, <laughs> yeah. even, you know, in a breezy day, even flowers whip around, so you can't uh, shoot them very well. But mm. mushrooms tend to, to lie, be fairly still, so, but. Odell Park, for example, is a wonderful place to, uh, to look for mushrooms. It, yes. when it, when, at least it's, if it rains enough, the last few years have been dry. Uh, well, the last year wasn't so bad, but, uh, but if you, you know, after a heavy rain, uh, maybe a couple of days is the time to go and they just, uh, they just pop out of everywhere. <laughs> oh, all that mycelia under the ground. <laughs> That's right, exactly. <laughs> well, that's very, very interesting. Um, what are you doing during COVID-19? What's occupying your time and your attention? Well, I was amazed to find out how good I am at doing nothing. It, uh, <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> just, uh, no, I, well, I sing in uh, four, four choirs. Right. Uh, and uh, one of our choirs was actually doing two concerts. So I count that as five choirs, uh, that my, including my, my church choir and, and uh, bel canto singers and a new choir called the Fredericton Camerata Singers. And I was helping uh, Diane Wilkinson with, with her, uh, 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 oh dear, my mind's gone. Anyway, her, her choir, her, her wonderful ladies choir, okay. Sicilian singers. And uh, <laughs> so, and of course, we had our last rehearsal sometime around March 12th, March 15th, right around that time, that horrible story about the choir out in, I think, Washington. Yes. So many yes. people infected, so whoa. 
Yeah, you're that, like <laughs> that just put the uh, put the boots right there to uh, any uh, choir. So they were all our concerts were, were were canceled, of course. And my church choir, we, we just the, the church had its first service last Sunday with 50 people total, hmm. and uh, only nine people allowed in the choir. With if you're, I guess they estimate if you're singing, you have to be uh, 12 feet apart rather well, than the, projecting your voice, voiceness. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, exactly. And um, so uh, our, our choir director took a, and, and our minister took a tape measure and measured 12 feet and found out where we could all sit. And put a little X it, on the spot. <laughs> yeah. So, and there's a limit of nine choir members plus the director plus our minister. And that, and that only leaves, what, 30, 38, 39 in the congregation. Got you. The, the church, uh, this is St. Anne's, uh, our Price Church Parish Church, the Anglican Church. Yes. And it seats about 400, so <laughs> there's lots of room. That people are kind of way off in the distance, wow. but people yeah. were, were wearing masks. And, and uh, our, uh, Reverend Wanlin Snellgrove, our minister, gave a wonderful sermon about how uh, she had heard uh, the Bishop Michael Curry from Washington talk about how the masks are a sign of love because we're, we're wearing them to protect others rather than protecting ourselves. So, right. Yes. You know, again, uh, I guess it's a silver lining. <laughs> Yeah, that's a nice, very nice way of looking at it, you know, to, to think of it that way. For sure. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, is there anything that you'd like to tell us that we haven't touched on in our little rambling conversation? Um, it, it certainly has been rambling. <laughs> uh, no, not really. I, um, hmm. Yeah, I, no, I, I think you've, uh, you've done a, a pretty good job of uh, ringing me out. <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> thank you very much. It's been uh, well, thank you very uh, much an honor to be in the show too. Uh, oh, I'm I'm very pleased. I I'm and I'm I'm excited about the the upcoming releases as well. It's been a, a great project to work on, and it's been an awesome way to explore the collection. Um, oh yeah. And you know um, the pieces that are either too large. Some of the pieces from the that one moment exhibition are very, very large. So they're, they're <laughs> difficult to, to hang in different places. So it's, it's a great opportunity to showcase works that don't get to be seen that much that are probably the ones that are truly the closest to my heart in the collection. Oh, that are yeah. special. So uh, thank you very much. And I appreciate you being here with us today. Uh, me too. Thank you. All right.